Hey guys, Lex here with another Fragrance video. Now this is my first Fragrance Top 10 video. I started a new series today. I'm still going to do Top 5, but this is the first video in the new Fragrance Top 10 series I've been talking about. So this one's been in development for a good while, actually. This list is Top 10 Scents to Smell Before You Die. And basically, yeah, I've been putting this one together for about 2 months, 3 months maybe. It's been really tough. I wanted to make the perfect list. A list that I've got out the ones in my collection, let's say for example, I had six months to live. God forbid. <laughs> let's say I did and I decided I want to get a fragrance. These would sort you out perfectly. Now since there's so many scents, I've split them up into two categories. Classic and modern. Now remember guys, classic is anything from 1999 and uh, below. And modern is anything from 2000 and up. I know that most people go with the normal 10 years or more, but for me I just do it my way. So what's the first up? What is the first scent? Number 10 in my list is... Yope Oh by Yope. This one, a lot of people will be shaking their heads going, why is he choosing that? But think about it. Let's go back to 1989. Nothing was like this. This was so unique. This has never been done before. So yeah. Beast mode projection longevity is absolutely excellent. This one is absolute fantastic. There's better scents out there and stuff, but this is just it. I mean, this is just so unique. If you go back to 1989, when this came out, just think about it. No one had sniffed this before. This was a hit. So yeah, of all the scents, it's definitely one you have to sniff. Everyone's heard of it for a reason. This is one of the ones you just have to get your nose on. Yop on by Yop, at least in 1989. Excellent scent. Do check it out. Next up, keeping it short and snappy, we have Boss Number 1 by Hugo Boss, released in 1985. This one is another one of my favourites. Really, really good. Cool bottle. I know I had a rant about the spray earlier, but oh well. <laughs> just a gorgeous smell. Really, really nice. It was a real tough one because it was this a Boss Bottle to make this list, but I chose this because I like this one just a little bit more. Boss Bottle is a 9 out of 10. This one's a 9.5 for me. They're both in a very good category, so you can't really go wrong, but this one gets it because this is discontinued, so this will be harder to find than Boss Bottle. So, let's say you did have six months to live, you'd want to sniff this one more because it's hard to find. So, mock it any store and sniff Bob, Boss Bottle. But this one, different story because it's been discontinued. So, yeah, that's Boss number one, but Hugo Boss makes number nine on my list. Next up, we have Paco Rabanne Pour Rome. Fantastic scent from the 70s. Really, really good. This one's an absolute classic. This is in uh, 1973 this came out. And it's just, why well, yeah, when people talk about barbershop 70s scents, this is what they're talking about. This is back from a decade and you could, you didn't even need a name. You didn't even need to say the name of the fragrance. You just say to someone, I'm wearing Paco Rabanne. Nowadays you think, oh, he's wearing one million. But back then, this was the one they were talking about. Excellent projection longevity. Really, really nice scent. Love this one. Really good. If you haven't sniffed this, do sniff it out. It's absolute classic. One of the first original barbershop scents, and it's still one of the best. Paco Rabanne Pour Rome from Paco Rabanne. Next up, we have Chanel's Antes. This was released in 1981, I believe. Yeah, 1981. And it's just an absolute classic. It gets my list because it was this or Eagle East. It was a real tough choice because there's a Chanel Allure and Eagle East and a few others. And this one is my favourite. This one's really, really good. Gorgeous bottle. Gorgeous scent. It's really unique. I've not sniffed uh, many things like this, if anything. I don't think I've sniffed anything like this ever before. And this is just absolutely gorgeous. The whole lipstick bottle thing is just awesome. So yeah, this one, by far, this one easily gets number seven on my list. 
So yeah, we're moving down. So we've done 10, 9, 8, 7. So next up, I have Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. I believe this came out in 1995. Opium by Yves Saint Laurent. Gorgeous scent. I talk about this one all the time. Eau de Toilette. Last long. Good, uh, good longevity projection. It just smells gorgeous. It's another one I haven't sniffed anything like this before. I haven't sniffed anything like this one before. And it always gives, makes me feel great wearing it. You can see how much I've worn of it, you know what I mean? I mean, look at my bottles, how much I wear compared to this. It's absolutely amazing. Really, really nice stuff. If you haven't sniffed it out, do give this one a try. Again, guys, this video, I've tried to pick one scent from each house. Since they're going, like, because I could have easily have three or four Dior's in here or Chanel's, you know what I mean? So, try to pick one from each house. So, this one is Open Eve Saint Laurent, at least in 1995. So, we're on to the last five. What do we have? Laptis Pour Rome by Ted Laptis makes number five. This one came out in 1987 and it is absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the most unique scents I've sniffed. The only scent I know it smells like this is a knockoff by Alva Hab called, um, is it June or something? A champ? Can't remember what it's called. It's, uh, just Google it, you'll be able to find it. But basically, Lord. Sorry, yeah, it's called Lord. Well, this one, it's knockoff this, but it's not as good. This is a masterpiece. This is beast mode projection, beast mode longevity. Absolute classic, famous for a reason, really, really good scent. I can't recommend this enough. Absolutely fantastic Laptis Pour Rome. Do check out if you haven't, guys. You can have this one pretty cheap, under 100 quid for 18 mils, and you will not regret it. I mean, I know loads of people that have, you know, creeds and all this expensive niche stuff, and they bought all this in the collection for good reason. They're like me, they're not price biased. Absolutely fantastic. That's number five, Laptis Pour Rome by Ted Laptis. Number four on my list, it's Savo Pour Rome. By Lovis Itzawa, this came out in 1978. A lot of people say it's an improved version of Paco Ban. I personally think a completely different sense. This is also my scent of the evening today. <laughs> really, really nice. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, people, This is a dicky one about projection. I don't get the best projection on longevity. I get the five hours most with this. Yeah, it's just dying away and I applied this four or five hours ago. So, yeah. Some people get beast mode though. Some say it's got it's been reformulated, it's just skin chemistry. The bottle's absolutely gorgeous, really, really nice, cool as hell bottle. You can have this cheap. I got this 100ml here for 20 quid in the perfume shop. I got the gift set for 20 quid, this in the deodorant. Really good scent. Probably the best 70 scent at rank number one in my best 70 cents video. Do check it out, guys. You will not be disappointed. Next up, we have Zeno Davidoff by the House of Davidoff, released in 1986. Johnny Depp's signature scent. And for a reason, it's so good. This one is not always one's a good projection on longevity. Really good. It's really classic. It can be had cheap, you can have it for like 25 quid for the 125 mil. And it does not smell like 25 quid. Never mind cool water, never mind that. This is the real Davidoff stuff. This is the one you should be sniffing. Really, really nice, really classy, absolutely gorgeous. It's really unique. I've not sniffed a lot of stuff like this. This was also number one in my top five 80 cents videos. So you'll notice a lot of number ones in this list for good reasons. This was number one in my top five 80 cents. Zeno Davidoff, released by Davidoff in 1986. Absolute masterpiece, really, really good. Next up we have Angel for Men, Amen by T.A. McGlay, released in 1996. Fantastic, really, really good. That's the Fahrenheit of the 90s, honestly. This made number one in my 90s video, top five 90s video, and for a reason, it's absolutely gorgeous. Really, really nice scent. This is a metal flask. I highly recommend you pick this one up if you can. Or the gold edition if you see it. Beast mode projection. Beast mode longevity. And that's the latest reform. It just smells gorgeous. Doesn't smell cheap at all. It's so unique. I have not. I think the closest thing to this is Animal Animal. Smell wise. Really, really good masterpiece. Absolutely fantastic. If you haven't sniffed this, you must sniff this. There's no question about it. T.I. Mugley's Angel Men 1996. So... What will be my number one in the list? What will be out of all these, the number one scent, classic scent, from before 1989 and before, to sniff? So if you have to sniff one scent before you die, from the classic era, what would it be? Fahrenheit by Christian Dior, released in 1988. This is an absolute masterpiece, I kid you not. Absolutely fantastic. This just, it blows me away. Masterpiece. And I know a lot of people probably disagree with my list, but this is my opinion. Absolute masterpiece. This, I've never smelled anything like this. In your niche, and all this expensive stuff, and 200, 300 pounds a bottle, perfume extra, you know, only 500 of this made, only 100 of that made. Forget all them. Forget them all. 
this is still the most unique scent I've ever sniffed. It's absolutely fantastic. It blows me away. I can't get over it. The first time I got this, I knew I was in the big leagues. I just couldn't get over how good it smells. I mean, look how much I've worn. I've been trying to be spaving with it, but I should really get a big 100ml. Really, really good. Absolutely top quality cologne. This is out of this world. This is the, one of the finest forms of perfumery. This is art. This is art. Absolute masterpiece. I can't give this enough praise. You have to sniff it. If you haven't sniffed this, fucking walk it in Dior. Just go to the counter, walk it in any store, and just ask, can I sniff that? Can I try that? You have to. You don't need to buy it. You just need to sniff this. Your life will not be complete unless you sniff this. You will die a happy man if you sniff this. Fantastic. At least 1988 by Dior. Amazing. Projection longevity are both great. They're just right, and it smells absolutely gorgeous. It smells like petrol, but really, really classy petrol. Petrol in a tuxedo. Absolute masterpiece. I know I've said it like 10 times now, and for a good reason. I think I should say it now 20 times. Masterpiece, 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 not a one. <laughs> but do sniff it. That's my number one classic scent to sniff before you die. And it probably will always be my number one. I'll probably never ever find anything that surpasses this, ever. So it's Fahrenheit by Dior. That's my number one. So we'll have a quick overview. Number 10, Yope Home by Yope. Number 9, Hugo Boss, number 1. Number, number 8, Paco Ban Pour Rome, number 7, and Taste by Chanel. Number 6, Open Pour Rome by Yves Saint Laurent. Number 5, Lapidus Pour Rome. Number 4, At Savo Pour Rome. Number 3, Zeno Davidoff. Number 2, Amen. And number 1, Fahrenheit by Dior. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I spent a lot of time putting this in the modern one together. This was a very hard list, so I hope you enjoyed it. Three months in the making. So yeah, <laughs> so guys, thank you for watching. Remember, any questions you have, but any sent in this video, leave it in the comments or send me a personal message. I will happily answer any questions you have. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, click on my channel. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and share with your friends. If you want to see more from this series, click on my channel, click on playlist, click on fragrance top 10, and the videos will be listed from the very latest to the uh, very first. Uh, the uh, song I use in the intro will also be in the description. I'll link to my blog. So yeah, guys. Thank you very much for watching and keep on smelling fly.